Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to see a very interesting example, and we're going to see how powerful this method of Laplace transform is when we do circuit analysis. Of course, here we have a very simple circuit. We have an RC circuit, a single capacitor, a single resistor with a voltage input. The voltage input is a single square wave starting at t equals a and ending at t equals b with a voltage at v sub naught, the constant voltage for that small time period between a and b. So the voltage input to the circuit is equal to V sub naught times U sub A, your unit step function when time equals A, minus the unit step function at time equals B to make sure it's zero after, afterwards. So when we go around the circuit and we add up all the voltages, we can say that the voltage across the input minus the voltage across the capacitor minus the voltage across the resistor equals zero. That's Kirchhoff's rules. And then we can solve for this. We can say that V sub R plus V sub C equals the voltage input by simply rearranging the terms. Now, of course, the voltage across the resistor is the resistance times the current, and the voltage across the capacitor is equal to 1 over the capacitance times the integral of the current times dt, and we set that equal to the voltage. Now we're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides. So R times the current in the S domain plus the reactance times the current in the S domain equals the voltage in the S domain. In other words, R remains R in the S domain, but the reactance in the S domain becomes C times, or 1 over C times S, and the voltage in the S domain, of course, is the Laplace transform of this. V sub naught is a constant, and for this we need 1 over S for this and 1 over S for that, plus the time shift, which is 1 over S times E to the minus AS, and 1 over S times E to the minus BS. Rearranging the terms a little bit, you can see that the current can be solved for in terms of V sub naught times 1 over S, when I pull out a 1 over S, times the remaining shifts in the S domain, and then if I factor out an I, and end up with an R plus 1 over C as in the denominator. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform to get to solution, to find the current in the time domain in that circuit. A trick that we can do is we can move the s to the denominator and we can move both the top and the bottom of this function here by 1 over r. When we do that, we get the following result. Coming over here, we end up with i in the s domain is equal to and maybe I should write it like this, that's better, i in the s domain, i in the s domain is equal to v sub naught over r times the shifts in the frequency domain, e to the minus as minus e to the minus bs, divided by, now the s goes down, we multiply the times, well first of all the r's cancel out, multiply times s, so we get an s here, plus uh, we have the S's cancel out, 1 over R times C. Now we want to take the inverse Laplace transform, but what we're going to do is we're going to ignore this shift for now. We're going to take this portion of the function right here. It's simply a constant divided by S plus, and this is a shift in the S domain that will look as follows. So what we can say here is that I, uh, let, let's say that F of S, is equal to V sub naught over R, the numerator, divided by S plus 1 over RC. So what we're going to do now is find the inverse transform of that, the inverse will pass transform of F of S is equal to, well this will give us the unit step function that will give us U of T with the shift, so this will give us times e to the minus r, 1 over rc, 1 over rc times t, so that's the shift we get from that, and we multiply it times v sub naught over r, v sub naught over r, which is the constant. And now we can see that this is additionally shifted by this right here. So now we have the Laplace transform of this function f of s, which is this part, but we still have to account for the shift in the s domain. In other words, that will cause this to change in a and in b. So when we multiply that, we get the following. We now can say that i, in the time domain, 
which is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of i in the s domain. So now we're going to include these two functions right here, which means we end up with v sub naught over r times u of a, because this doesn't start until we time is equal to a, of e to the minus 1 over rc times t minus a, like this. So now when the impulse goes to 0 at time equals b, we want to subtract minus u of b at t times e to the minus 1 over rc times t minus b. And that will be the current response to this particular input. If we were to graph that to get a feel for what that looks like on a graph, so we have the current as a function of time versus time. We have the input right here at A and the end of the input at B. In other words, we get an immediate input of V sub naught over R, the initial input when time is equal to zero or when time is equal to a, we get e to the 0, which is 1. So we have a step function. So this here would be v sub naught over r. Then you can see over time it decays until we get to b. Then we have a minus u sub b equal to this, like that. And then it will decay over time to 0 as time goes by. So you can see that the Laplace transform offers us a really nice way to take something like this, which would be difficult to calculate in another way, simply take the voltages around the circuit, then convert that to the voltages being a product of the resistance or the reactance times the current. We convert that into the S domain. In the S domain, we have an equation for the current. We then take the inverse Laplace transform of that to get the, to get the current in the time domain, which we could then graph out like this. So it's a really nice way to provide the current in the circuit as a function of time. And that's how it's done.